Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. It's on the screen for those today in the house of the Lord. And 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, the King James text today reads, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. My Resurrection Sunday message today, if we believe. If you'll bow your heads with me one more moment. Master, we love you and we thank you, God, for the wonderful presence of the Holy Ghost that we have felt in the house of the Lord today. Even before the service began, Lord, I was rejoicing. Oh, I was rejoicing in the truth. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. I was rejoicing in the truth. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. Oh, Master, today we celebrate the resurrection because we believe the resurrection. Master, the man of God today requires, it is essential to my effectiveness as a preacher of the gospel, it is essential that you anoint by the Holy Ghost right now. Help me to deliver, O oh God, the word that you've placed in my heart for the church of the living God. Many will watch and listen to this message who do not know you. And I pray, God, by the end of this message that their heart is crying out to you. Oh God, that the desire fills their soul to walk in fellowship and relationship with you. Lord, that they cry out with sincere hearts, God, have mercy on my soul. Save me for Jesus' sake. Master, today as the word goes forth, let it bring healing to those who are sick in body. Let it bring deliverance to those who are bound. Most importantly, Oh God, let it bring salvation and restoration and healing to those today who are unsaved and those who are backslidden. Restore, Master, today in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, to not only hear the words, but to receive them gladly that the Word of God might perform a work in our hearts. We ask it all in none other than Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God and amen. Why in the world, Pastor, would you begin a resurrection Sunday message with a passage from the epistles that speaks of the promise of the Lord's return? I'll tell you why. Because the whole purpose and the whole promise of the resurrection is because he lives we can live also hallelujah because Jesus conquered the death and he conquered the grave and the tomb we too one day will know what it is to conquer death and the grave and the tomb hallelujah our bodies may one day be buried but our souls shall one day live again and we will walk through it.
eternity in the presence of Almighty God. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. The only problem is there's a big, 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 big word that is found in this passage I read to you today. I believe it's one of the biggest words in the Word of God. There are a couple of words in Scripture that are huge. You say, Pastor, do you mean they have a lot of letters in them? No. They have very few letters, but they have a huge import and a huge impact on the meaning of what is being said. One of those words is but. <laughs> when you read the Scriptures and you read the word but, but if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. But means there's a condition. You, you can't assume the one without knowing for certain the other. Hello now. You cannot be a new creature unless you are in Christ Jesus. And if you are in Christ Jesus, you cannot help but be a new creature. Hello now. Well, that's one of those big words. That has great import. But there's another word, and it is found today in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 14. The Apostle Paul writes, For if we believe. Ooh. See, now let me help you understand something about the Word of God. I've taught this and preached this over and over and over again in our church. So anybody who's a member of this church knows how this works. When you read in the epistles, the apostle referring to us, we, our, he is speaking to and of the church. Those who are supposed to be numbered among the redeemed. When they speak of them they, that's in reference to the world. That is in reference to the unsaved, the unregenerate, those who have not yet come to know Christ in truth. The Apostle Paul said in First Thessalonians, listen to me children, this is important. He said, for if we believe. You need to pay real close attention to the language he uses here. He said, if we, we, we in the church, if those of us in the church who claim to be part of the church believe. You see, there's a problem. Not everybody who goes to church is a believer. See, the world has a habit of looking at people who claim Christianity and assuming that they are in fact Christians. Mm -hmm. What they don't understand is a person who does not conduct themselves as a Christian is not a Christian. That's right. It is impossible to be a true Christian and not exemplify Christ. You cannot be a homophobe. You cannot be hateful. You cannot be racist. You cannot be xenophobic and be a child of God because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hello now. Mm -hmm. If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. Got news for you, honey. Some of the features that go with the old creature are homophobia and hatefulness and maliciousness. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. And xenophobia. We're not afraid of others anymore. We're not concerned about what others do, whether it's right or wrong. No. As a child of God, we become singularly focused on living our best life. Not so we can make heaven our home because Jesus secured heaven for us on the cross of Calvary. We're going to see the Lord one day face to face not because of how good we can live and how perfect we can be but because the most good and perfect being that ever walked on planet earth humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross and he did for us what we couldn't possibly do for ourselves and now he says all 
you have to do is believe. He that believeth on me, I shall in no wise cast out. He that believeth on me shall not be condemned. He that believeth on me shall not be ashamed. That's what the Word of God says. The message of Jesus Christ is not homo, be straight. The message of Jesus Christ is not drunkard, be sober. The message of Jesus Christ is not drug addict, uh, uh, be delivered. That is not the message of Christ. The message of Christ is believe on me. Hallelujah. It is summed up very tidily in John chapter 3 verse 16 but don't you forget verse 17 don't you forget verse 17 oh I'm telling you there are a lot of people out there who love to quote John 3 16 but they just glide right and pass John 3 17 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life listen for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. The word of God declares there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. How do we get in the ark? We believe. Hallelujah. We are saved through faith. Glory to God. And by the grace of Almighty God. And not by works because nobody will stand before God and be able to boast of their righteousness mm -hmm. their goodness, their holiness there nobody going to stand before the Lord and say Lord I'm standing here looking at you today in heaven because of what I did mm -hmm. because I was able to live alcohol free because I was able to do this because I was able to do that no, everybody that's got that boast on their lips won't be looking at Jesus. And they're going to be somewhere else and they won't be saying, I'm here because I was able. They're going to be saying, I'm here because I wasn't able, listen to me, to simply believe the gospel. Mm -hmm. No, I had to add to it. I had to... I had to put in there that man effort had something to do with it. I had to put in there that it was required of me to do certain works if I was going to make heaven my home and one day see the Lord. I had to add to the message of the gospel. I couldn't accept the simplicity of what Jesus Christ and his apostles taught us. I just couldn't do it. Well, honey, I got news for you. Salvation today is not in the doing, it's in the believing. The Apostle Paul said in our primary text today, for if we believe. Hallelujah. The big word here being if. One of the most important words in the Word of God is the word if. Many promises and many truths are predicated upon an if. Use of this word speaks to the truth that the end is predicated upon the condition of the if. There is a condition that must be met if that benefit is to be realized. Many people today embrace Christianity as a religion or simply as a philosophy. They see it as a way of life based upon the teachings of Christ or the mandates of God's Word. But embracing the Christian religion is not the same as embracing faith in Christ. The reason we see so many behaving in a manner that is inconsistent with biblical Christianity
Christian standards is because for them Christianity is a religion it is a philosophy it is a way of life but it's fundamental truth is not something they sincerely and genuinely believe. And what is that fundamental truth? That fundamental truth being faith in a living, risen, resurrected Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Paul said, if you believe this, you're going to partake in the resurrection. Well, I got news for you. He's saying, if you believe this, you're going to be saved. Am I telling the truth? Because the saved are going to be in the resurrection. And the people in the resurrection are going to be those who are saved. So therefore, if he's saying, you will only participate in the resurrection if we believe that Jesus Christ died, listen to me, and rose again. Notice Paul didn't simply say, if we believe that Jesus rose again. No, because there's a lot of people who try to tell you, well, see, what happened was he just went into a semi-comatose state. And they put him in that tomb. And he wasn't really fully dead, see. And then he revived after a few days of, of just laying there, you know, calmly and quietly and nobody bothering him. Then he just revived and, and came back to life. But Paul said, no, 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 you got to believe two things. you got to believe, number one, he died. Hallelujah. And secondly, that he rose again. Glory to yes. God. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to tell you today, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Glory to God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 17, the word of God says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Listen, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto, listen, unto righteousness. You see, your, your righteousness before God is attained by faith, not by action, not by your deeds, but by faith. He said, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God over and over and over again in Romans chapter 8 verses 8 through 17 we see Paul turning us to faith which is synonymous with the word 
believe or belief hallelujah over and over again he helps us to understand that faith comes by hearing listen to me children the bible said that god chose the foolishness of preaching to save them which are lost it's not about reading it and believing what you read mm. No, no. Uh -uh. The system that God ordained is that the gospel should pass by word of mouth. Why would this be? I'll tell you why it would be. Because you can take Bibles, you can confiscate Bibles, you can burn Bibles, but you can't burn the word of mouth. Hallelujah. Right. Oh my goodness. As long as there are people who have the uh, who have stamina and who have the courage to speak the gospel, then this message can never be silenced. But he did not call us to publish the gospel. He did not call us to write the gospel and to get it out there in written form. No, no, no. He said it needs to be preached. People need to hear it by word of mouth. And they will believe upon what they have heard. Not what they've read. What they have heard with their own ears. You know why? Again, because I believe today because someone told me this message and God put the faith in my spirit to believe it. But somebody told that person the message and 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 somebody told that person the message. And, the message. and if you trace it back, you're going to go all the way back and you're going to find that the first person to tell the message of a risen Christ was that young man in the tomb I read about at the beginning of the service. Hallelujah. Every one of us today who are believers are believers because by word of mouth that message has passed through the ages. It has passed through the centuries. Oh my goodness, isn't that exciting today? Mm -hmm. It has passed through the millennium. Glory to God by word of mouth. And this is why people don't understand the concept of tithing. They don't understand supporting the pastor and supporting the church. That is so that this message can continually be spoken. So that this message can continually be preached. We are supporting the preaching. Paul said, how can they hear except someone tell them? How can someone tell them except they be sent? They have to be supported in going. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? He didn't say, how shall they hear? Except someone go. That's not what he said. He said, except they be sent. Which means somebody in the background is putting them forth. Somebody in the background is supporting them and putting them forth so they can do the work they're doing. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? That's why it's a joy for me to tithe. That's why it's a joy for me to give to the work of God. Because I am helping to make certain that my pastor is able to keep preaching this message. Because salvation comes through the hearing of God's word faith cometh by hearing faith for what faith for salvation cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god eternal salvation is not promised to those who simply profess christ but rather it is promised to those who profess him while simultaneously sincerely believing in their heart that he is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people went to resurrection services around the world today. A lot of people went into churches this morning and last night even to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. And many of those people who went into those services, uh, they basically approach 
religion, they basically approach faith as, you know, well, this is the fairy tale that I profess. This is the little fictional story that I put forth as, you know, th this is what I believe in. Yep, the, you know, this is what they say, and this is what the church teaches, and therefore I, I profess this, and I live this, and I do this, because the church says so. But do they believe in their heart? That God raised up Christ from the dead? No, they do not. Because to them, they think religion is just this little, you know, it's, this, it's kind of this little fiction that we embrace. You know, how many times I've heard people say, you know, well, religion kind of occupies this space in my life. And then, you know, other things occupy other spaces. But they have their faith compartmentalized. They have it off over here. This is where my faith is. This is, you know, this is where my beliefs are. I still believe in evolution. I still believe in science. I still believe in all these things. But, you know, but this is my faith over here. I, I, but, you know, but the Bible says God created everything. So, you know, I say that I believe God created everything. But, you know, I, I think science has pretty much sewed it up and proven that evolution is, is how things came about. So, therefore, got news for you. Uh, you can get upset with me all you want to, but science hasn't sewn that issue up by a million miles. And if they'd be honest and truthful about it, they would tell you that science hasn't sewn it up. I've got books written by uh, authors who are Jewish, number one, and non-religious, number two. But they're scientists. And they've written books, and they've said... There are so many assumptions attached to evolution. There are so many assumptions that are attached to it because science starts out on the premise that science can explain everything. So before you believe anything science teaches, you first embrace the notion that science has the ability to explain everything. What they don't tell you is that science is constantly getting more information, more and more information over the course of time, and then all of a sudden something that they taught as fact for decades or centuries is suddenly now no longer factual, but facts have changed. Well, wait a minute, facts don't change. If it was a planet then, it's a planet now. Oh my when I was in school, there were nine planets. Am I telling the truth? All of a sudden, I'm a full-grown adult, and I'm told, oh, no, no, there ain't nine planets. There's not but eight planets now. What? Well, certain facts have come to light. Let me tell you something. A lot of people go to a prison not because they're guilty, but because a number of facts are brought into the courtroom and enough facts are introduced to the jury that they're able to determine in good faith that yes, this person's guilty. And then over the course of time, all of a sudden DNA comes along. And DNA is able to determine that no, this person ain't the guy that did it. He said for the last 20 years he'd been sitting in jail that he didn't do it. Well, what's different now that was... That wasn't different then. Nothing. All the facts were there. The problem is we didn't have the technology then to uncover the facts now. So I got news for you. One day when Jesus comes and the Word of God said, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then shall we see face to face. One day when the Lord returns, humanity is going to be able to see creation and understand creation. And all of a sudden there are going to be facts that come to light that we didn't have down here. Things we didn't have technology to discover. Things we didn't have the technology to figure out. Oh, we got people today that can believe in evolution and they can believe that there are uh, space aliens roaming through the skies. Oh, they probably have technologies that are found 
thousands of years ahead of our technology. That's how they're able to travel millions of light years across the universe and visit our planet. We got people out there who can believe that, but they can't believe that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. What if those aliens have technology that is able to produce knowledge and facts concerning this planet? What if they have the technology to produce knowledge and facts concerning that simply haven't been introduced as of yet to science? And once those facts and once that knowledge was introduced, all of a sudden the verdict would change. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? You see, all faith says is you got to be humble enough as a creation rather than as the creator to acknowledge we don't have all the facts. Science acts as though it has all the facts. And then when the facts change, they conveniently change with the facts. And we're supposed to just go along for the ride. Do you know what they call that? They call that a cult. Cults do the same thing. They'll say something over and over and over. They'll predict something's going to happen a certain year. Blah, 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 blah. They'll, for, for decades, they'll say, when this year comes, this is going to happen. Then all of a sudden, this year comes, it don't happen. And all of a sudden, all the facts change. All of a sudden, they're rewriting history. And they're rewording everything. And they're changing everything. Folks, got news for you. Science does the same thing. What is so hard about simply saying, my faith says God created the heavens and the earth. Science, I understand. I can talk to you all day and all night about uh, survival of the fittest. I can talk to you all day and all night about, uh, about uh, evolution. I've studied it. I don't have a problem. I don't have one problem in the world studying evolution. Doesn't bother me no kind of way. I don't mind understanding the way they see things and the way they understand things. But after I finish studying evolution, my mind says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. My faith stands. Hello now. Why? Because you can prove them wrong? No. Because I know for a fact they don't have all the facts. And I know for a fact that the minute the facts change, they're suddenly going to change. Well, we thought the earth was this many years old, but, you know, we didn't have the technology then. We didn't realize that after a certain point, carbon uh, begins to deteriorate at a, at a far faster rate or a far slower rate or blah, 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 blah. We didn't realize that after, you, you know what I'm saying? We don't know. And so, so our carbon dating might be off. Right now, it's only, it, it's only able to date within half a million years. That's what carbon dating, that's what they claim that it's within half a million years accurate. But we got people that believe these things. Let me tell you, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, it's not enough to profess it, folks. It's not enough to play Christianity like it is some religious game. It is not enough to embrace Christianity as a religion or a philosophy or a way of life. The righteousness of God by faith is promised only to those who believe in the resurrected Christ. Not those who embrace the Christian religion or strive to live by a Christian philosophy. Genuine faith, listen, is always manifested in our conduct. We go to the house of God faithfully and we worship the Lord. Why? Because we believe. Genuine love is manifested in our conduct. We go to the house of God. We worship. We read our Bible. We pray. Why do we do these things? Because 
because we believe. If you believe God's real, if you believe God answers prayer, then you'll pray. If you believe the Word of God holds important wisdom and truth and knowledge for us, then you will read the Word of God. If you believe God is real and He has called us to love one another and to fellowship with one another so that we might encourage one another and inspire one another to live our best lives and to be our best testimony and so that we as the church can evangelize the lost and bring the message of the gospel to those who have not yet believed. If we believe that, then we're going to be part of a church and we're going to fellowship and we're going to support it. And if you're not doing those things, then somewhere, somehow, you can claim you believe these things all you want to. You can claim it till the cows come home. But when your actions don't support, if your partner says I love you and then mistreats you and abuses you and does things that are contrary to the way you like to see things done and hurts you, um, you're going to come to the conclusion that your partner must not love you as they claim to love you. Got news for you. There are a lot of people who claim to believe this thing. And yet they don't live this thing. And if you're not living this thing, then it has to be questioned whether or not you in fact believe in it all. Oh, pastor, you're an LGBT affirming pastor. You're supposed to water everything down. You're supposed to make everything sweet and juicy for everybody. We're not supposed to hear hard words. I'm sorry, sometimes you got to eat the broccoli, not just the cake and pie. Many want to live their lives in a manner that demonstrates nothing concerning faith. And a life which is devoid of evidence of love and faith is a life that is genuinely absent these things. Your profession alone will not save you. For our profession to be valid, it must be married to sincere faith in our resurrected Lord if we believe. Mark chapter 9 verses 17 through 27 and this is my final scripture this afternoon. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son which hath a dumb spirit and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him and saith, O faith, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, unto Jesus. And when he, Jesus, saw him, Straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, the father said, Of a child, since he was a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Listen, Lord, I believe. Help thou my non-belief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. 
But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. I want to tell you, folks, if you're struggling with your faith, if you're not certain that what you're professing with your lips is what you believe in your heart, it's time to look up toward heaven and say as this Father did, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Am I telling the truth today? Amen. Don't miss out on eternity because you didn't have this thing in your heart. You embraced it as a philosophy. You embraced it as a religion, but you couldn't quite get to the point where you embraced it as truth. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Oh, children, look up toward heaven. I'm telling you, and just ask the Lord right now, God, help my unbelief. Anything in me, Lord, that is struggling with believing you and believe in this gospel and believe in this message and believe in that you died and rose again, help me, Lord, to overcome that unbelief that I might be saved. Hallelujah. Because this thing is promised today only if we believe. The cry of our heart today ought always be, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Hallelujah. Yeah. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Praise the name of the Lord.